Hey there, this is a quick video because uh, someone on YouTube asked, after watching my Frostum Culling uh, Blender Geometry Nodes tutorial, is there a way to have a ray blocker in the setup? Say if I have a rock blocking some instances, how do I cull the points behind the rock? Well, this is actually pretty easy to do. So in this video, I'm going to show you how. And I will be using my startup file, which you might be familiar with, it's free for all patrons, to do this. Because uh, my startup file already has the Frustum Culling uh, setup built in. So this is a good starting point. Right, so if I select this uh, backdrop here, you can see I have a geometry nodes on here called Frustum Culling Example, but it's disabled by default. So that this is the default view you get when you open the startup file. But I can enable this. And what it does is we, I distribute points onto this backdrop and I instance this, uh, this uh, material preview orb onto these points. But I can, of course, switch off uh, that one so that we just see the material preview. I'm also going to switch over to the, this view here so that it renders a little faster. And you can see we only see the stuff that's inside of uh, the camera. Now, by default, I have this set up uh, with this camera width and height here, just to demonstrate that we're actually culling the stuff outside of our camera view. Of course, if you wanted this to be usable, you would go out of the camera um, view here a little bit and also increase the height. But by default, I set this to be inside here just to make clear that we're actually culling objects. And if I take my camera track two point and I move that around, you can see we only get the points and the instances that are inside of our camera. Okay. So this is camera culling and this is this geometry nodes setup. So if I go over to geometry node editor, you can see here, this is a distributing points, instancing onto those points, but only the selection coming from this Frustum culling node group here. And this includes the stuff from that tutorial where we're casting rays from each point towards the camera. And we see if it hits this lens object in the front here. And if it hits that object, we're inside of the camera view. And if it doesn't hit that object, maybe the point up here, um, to the camera doesn't hit this lens object, then we're, we call this and we don't render it. So that's the whole point of the camera frustum, which is that area inside of the camera view, frustum culling. Now, what if we have an object in here? Let's say I'm just going to add a simple cube here, mesh cube. So if I move this, let's go GC1. Now, we really don't need any of these objects here because they're behind the cube. That's the point of the question. What if we have in an object, and a blocker object, and we want to call the objects behind that cube? And in addition to the uh, frustum culling for our camera view. So how do we do that? Actually, I think cycles might even be faster. I don't know. This feels snappier now. Weird. Anyway, so let's go back to this guy here, our backdrop that has the points on it. And let's look into this Frustum Culling node group because we have to do something very similar. Uh, let's think about this real quick. We have to um, cast a ray from each point towards the camera. So same thing as before. And we have to determine, does the ray touch our object? Does it hit the object? And if it hits the object, it, we, we're just going to say it's behind the object. And then we don't need to render it, right? So um, really, in this setup here, this is the raycast node. And it casts rays in a direction, which is towards the camera. Coming in here, camera. This is the the vector from the point to the camera. So that would be the direction. And then the, this is the ray length so that it has the correct length all the way to the camera. And this here, this grid object here, this uh, right now is our sort of our lens object, this, this thing um, generated right here. And if it hits that object, then it's inside the camera view. So that's what that setup is. So how do we set this up? I'm just going to 
select all of these nodes, copy them, get out of my node group and paste them right in here. Now let's get rid of the stuff we don't need. We don't need this lens object here, which is this guy. We don't need to transform it. So we don't need any of this. We do, however, need our camera object because we need to get the vector between the point and the camera. And we need to raycast towards the camera. Now, the target geometry that we need to know, that we want to know, does it hit the target geometry or not? Which is this is hit output here. That will be our cube now. So where do I have my cube? Let me put that into the scene collection. Put the cube in here and that's the geometry relative so we can move it around. So this output here now says, does the ray from the point to the camera hit the cube? Okay, so that's the is hit. Let's see if this is correct. Let's just instance some objects onto this. Uh, relative cube, let's see, camera. Oh, we don't have a camera in here. We need to get the camera connected here. And then we get this. Yeah, so that's these are the points that we don't want, right? So these are the points now that are behind the cube from the view of the camera. Does it work if I take the track two and move that? The track two, yeah. Well, that doesn't change because the points don't change and the camera position doesn't change. What if I move the camera? Yes. Okay, correct, undo that. Now let's go back here. So these are the points that we don't want. So these are the points that we get from our camera view. And now we simply have to do a little Boolean operation that says, um, this is hit. We want to do a Boolean math. We want to do not, because we don't want these. And then we need another Boolean math, an and. We want these points, which are the ones inside of the camera, and not these points, and that's our selection. So now we get this. We only get the points inside the camera. We don't see the ones behind this cube, so we don't need to render them. Um, we don't have, need to have them in the scene at all. So if I move this, yep, we have this blocked out area behind the cube. Okay, now let's go back here. Of course, we can improve this a little bit because we can now make a nice little note group out of this. We're going to call it obstacle culling. So what needs to go into this group? Uh, let's do this. Uh, let me just let me hook this, let me get rid of this quick. Plug this back in here so that we just have the camera. Okay, now let's group this, control G. Let's put this into a group. And let's call this input camera. So here we know we get the camera and the group output is our is hit. And I'm going to call this is hidden. Now, all we really need is the cube object. So our obstacle. And I actually want to type the target geometry out of here. And I'm going to call that the obstacle geometry. Okay. Let's clean this up a little. So now we have this cool little node group and I will call it obstacle culling. And it gives us the is hidden output. Now out here, if we want to combine this, we have to do this not and. And I think we should improve our little obstacle culling node a little bit. Um, by taking in the selection, so we can daisy chain this. Yeah, okay. So we're taking in the selection. Let's add another input. Uh, where is it? Socket. The type should be a Boolean, and I'm going to call it selection. And I'm going to do this not and thing right in here. Okay, so Boolean math. Could have copied it over two, but so not this 
uh, and then set this to and. So we want the selection and not the ones behind our obstacle geometry. Okay. And we pipe that out as a second output that we call selection. Cool. So now we have this obstacle culling node. And instead of plugging this in here and then doing the end not thing, we can daisy chain more obstacle culling nodes now by plugging the selection in here and plugging this selection in here. That didn't work. Plug that in there. Okay. Is it still working? Uh, no, because we don't have the obstacle geometry in here. We wanted our cube. So let's bring that back in here real quick. That will be the obstacle. Yes, it works. What if we have, let's set it to relative. Okay, this works. Now, what if we have a second one over here and we want to do this again? Well, we could put them in a group and then use the groups uh, geometry or we just daisy chain cube zero, zero, 001, this one, selection chain in here. You know what? I'm going to put a little note in here. Oops. Uh, and then selection, selection. Does that work? Cube relative. Here we go. Um, selection. Oh, because we need the camera too. We don't have a camera yet. So let's do something like this. And then this should work. This is that one. And this is that one. So it sort of makes a sh uh, almost like a shadow in our distributed points. If we look like this, of course, we see that there's points missing. But if we look through the camera with a numpad zero, you can look through the camera. Um, now we don't have the points in our scene that we can't see anyway. However, there's a few things to note here. And uh, let me see if I can show you real quick. Okay, right here. I want you to look um, right in this area here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move the node, uh, the, the cube. See this? I'm just moving it slightly left to right. So why does this come in to view and, and flicker out of view? Well, the problem is that from this point, we're only ra uh, recasting a single ray to the camera from the point, from the, which is the center where the, the object is instanced. And from this point, and from this point, and from this point. In order to know if the entire object is behind this cube, we would need to raycast a whole bunch of rays from this object towards the camera. But since we're not doing that, really on, the only thing we get is if the center point is behind the cube, it disappears. And if it's um, hitting the camera, the ray, then it's it's visible. So for animations, this might not be the thing you want. Another way to fix this would be to not actually use the object itself, but sort of like a smaller version of it. Um, and use that inside of the geometry nodes, the object culling geometry nodes, and sort of have this threshold around. Uh, that needs to be the si at least the size of the object that we're uh, looking at, which is difficult because of perspective. Well, it, it gets messy. So for animations, this might not be the solution. But so think of it this way. If you're rendering like a forest with thousands of trees and you're just rendering a still image, this might be the perfect solution. You don't need all these trees back here in your scene slowing down your rendering. So yeah, you have to think about this. This is not about uh, what you should do. This is about how you can add an obstacle culling node similar to our frustum culling node. Now, if you're a patron, you can download my startup file, which includes all of this and also the new object culling node tree or node group as an asset. So right in here, 
where is it? We have the frustum culling, the obstacle culling. Okay. And you just drag this in here. It gives you this with the camera, the obstacle geometry, and the selection input and output for daisy chaining, just like what we did here. Once again, this startup file is free for all patrons. You can find it at patreon.com slash chris p. And this is now also the version, the new version you will find there is for Blender 4.3. Drop your questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. See ya.